Good morning, dear friends. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes, it is Easter. It is the season of Easter. I tried to flip the camera a little bit so you could see that we've decorated the altar with gold and white, our colors of, of celebration. I'm not sure you can read it over there, but Miss Wendy has put the word Alleluia back. We have not said that word in quite a long time. And here we are celebrating, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, celebrating um, our life together as Christians, just celebrating. So I'm very happy to be here with you. And let us open. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for being right here with us, although we cannot see you. Thank you for all of us who are here today in whatever form we are together. Amen. So we know that Jesus has died and Jesus has risen. And now we're in that time where we'll be talking about what happens after Jesus has risen. And today we talk about the disciples. The disciples were the followers of Jesus. Um, remember, they were very frightened um, when Jesus was crucified. And they, were, they thought maybe the, the leaders, religious leaders, and the people who had killed Jesus might come for them too. They were really closely associated with him. And if Jesus was a danger, they might be considered a danger too. So they were very, very frightened. They also had this news that Jesus, they, who, who died, who died, who was put in a tomb, that, that tomb was empty. So they're, they're, they're scared, they're confused, they're feeling all kinds of things right now. And this is where we pick things up. I'm going to read from just a tiny bit from our children's Bible. From the Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, Stop doubting and have faith. Thomas replied, You are my Lord and my God. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Well, that part of the Bible, that, that excuse me, that those verses from the Bible come kind of the end of the story. And I am going to now go into this illustrated Bible for children, which takes our scripture and makes it into story form. So you won't find exactly this in the Bible, but you'll get the gist of it. They're making it a little bit more story-like, a little bit more cohesive. You put putting things together. So we're starting off and we're, we're the Sunday that Jesus has risen. And as I said, the disciples are together, but they're having a lot of different emotions right now. The evening sun was going down and the disciples were in complete confusion. The stories they had heard through the day had unsettled them completely. They were talking amongst themselves. They were talking about what they'd heard and what they'd seen, trying to make sense of it all. And shh, shh, for goodness sakes, keep your voices down, whispered one. The people who had Jesus put to death are bound to be looking for him. We've locked the doors and we want anyone passing by to think that this room is empty. Silence fell. We're all here, aren't we, said John. Well, not Judas. Remember, he was the one who betrayed Jesus. He was not going to be joining them anytime soon. And Thomas is still out, whispered another. So that's just, that's 10 of us to sort out what we've heard. Who wants to speak next? Who wants to tell what they have heard? Peace be with you, said a man in the shadows. All heads turned to look. It was not any of them that had spoken. They looked and they saw that it was Jesus. He said this and he showed them his hands 
and his side. Because that, remember, he was crucified. Who would have marks from that? The disciples were so happy. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. When you forgive the sins of others, they're forgiven. If you don't, they are not. And the disciples were overjoyed. They were so happy. All those emotions that they were feeling, they added another one, and this was extreme joy. Jesus had told them that they were to continue the work that he had begun. As, as my Father sent me, so I send you. And it seems like their great adventure was alive again, that they were going to go back to doing what they had been doing. And then, just as suddenly and mysteriously as, as he had appeared, Jesus was gone. But he really is alive, they said to one another. We cannot doubt what we have seen. Now, Thomas had not been with them. I didn't see, and I don't believe you, he scoffed when he'd heard what they said. I want to see for myself the nail marks in his hands and touch the spear wound in his side. Then I'll tell you what I think. And time passed, and no one came, and Thomas grew more and more scornful by the day. Perhaps we were all dreaming, said John. Or drinking, suggested Thomas loftily. He was the last to join the group that evening. It's a week later now, and he turned to lock the door. As he did so, a man stood in front of him. Peace be with you, he said. It was Jesus, his hands reaching forward to greet Thomas, the disciple who had been missing. See the nail marks? Feel the spear wound in my side. Jesus fell to his knees. My Lord and my God, he said. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who believe without seeing. That's our story. I'll show you the illustration. Put that up close. You can see Jesus sort of mysterious looking over there in white. Thomas, the disciple, kneeling seeing the nail wounds, the others in the background witnessing. So what do you think about that story? I know that when I hear it, I think about how I would respond. I think of all those emotions going around. And I think about being Thomas. Now, Thomas has a little bit of a, an image problem because even in the, the, the title they gave to this particular portion, they called it Doubting Thomas. And I've heard people talk badly about Thomas. How could he, how could he be like that? Jesus can do anything. God can do anything. You know, why would you doubt? Well, I wouldn't say, I, I, I would put myself in, in Thomas's shoes there. Say, you know, this goes against everything I've ever seen, everything I've ever experienced. And while these my best friends are saying, telling me something, this just doesn't match with the way I've ever experienced the world. I think I would be a little bit doubtful too. Say, you know, prove it to me, show me. But you know what happened? The part that we need to remember when Thomas saw, he went beyond everyone else and he called Jesus, my God, my Lord and my God. He, he made a big jump with that. Um, and he was a faithful disciple. Before that, Jesus said something many times. He said, peace be with you. I wonder what that was about. Some of it may have been because the disciples were so worked up. They were so excited. They were so emotional. that They just had to calm down to know what was going on. But it keeps coming back, peace, my peace be with you. And we in church talk about the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. We share it with each other. I wonder if it means more than just calming down and settling down. But if Jesus is starting to extend that, um, the, 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 the knowledge of, of God, the knowledge that we are all of God's kingdom, that we're doing, we've got work to do together, um, 
we're in this together, something of unity, something of joy. I wonder, that was a very important phrase that came up over and over again in that story. Also notice it was a little bit of a tiny thing, but Jesus breathed on them. Now, also a curious thing to do, but something who was a vision, a dream, couldn't breathe on you. So that was one way of showing that he was really with them. Another interesting thing is that when you talk about, um, I believe it's in Hebrew, that breath and spirit are the same word. There's ruach. And so when he breathes on them, he, he shares his spirit. And this will come back. This is like a little bit of a, of a taste of what's to come um, when Jesus shares the spirit with them in that way. And Jesus didn't, didn't say, Thomas, you're out of the club because you doubted. He showed, Jesus, he showed Thomas that it was really him. And uh, that's important too, because a lot of times the disciples stand in for us. I think a lot of us can relate to Thomas in terms of thinking, mm, I don't really know about this, but Jesus showed him. Jesus, Jesus was there. Jesus took his doubt and turned it into reality, turned it into real faith. Yes, there's a special blessing for those who see, uh, who believe, but have not seen, but there's also room for those who need to see. So that's our story of Thomas and the piece that Jesus gives. What I sent home, uh, there's a front to back. There's just some word, there's a little word find. I know some of you like word finds, and so I found a word find. The other one, haven't seen one of these before, just a little, uh, two pictures, almost identical, that you can color. Jesus standing, his wound, and Thomas down here kneeling. Um, but there's some differences between the two. See if you can spot them. The other thing I sent home has to do with peace. And this is a peace sign. This is not biblical. This is not a Christian. It's just kind of fun. So I picked one that was like Eastery, which has like pretty flowers on it and that you can color and have fun with. So remember Thomas, who is like us. Remember also that Jesus gave his peace to us all. Today, as always, we close with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus and for the peace that is with us all. We ask you to watch over those who are sick and suffering, comfort those who are in distress and troubled, show those who are doubtful that you are the Lord, our Lord, and our God. Be with those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, other blessings of this life. And as always, we pray the words that you gave us, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just because we can't say it enough, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Have a wonderful week, my friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 See you next week.